What is going on guys? JD from New York here. Thank you guys so much for tuning back into the channel tonight. April 11th, 2017. Night number two of the Superstar Shake-Up on SmackDown Live. Oh JD, what about SmackDown, me? They had their own shake-up, motherfucker. You seen it, right? You seen it. Everybody thought SmackDown was getting raped and pillaged. Everybody thought Monday Night Raw was burning down the village of SmackDown. They might as well have. I still don't think after tonight that SmackDown reaped as much benefits as Monday Night Raw. But some might think otherwise. But the main thing here for SmackDown Live is that they got guys from Monday Night Raw that were not being utilized... That will be much better utilized on SmackDown Live. That's the biggest thing that we took away from this. And I'm going to bring up some more points to you guys as far as divisions go. And why these individuals were placed on SmackDown Live. And who we might be seeing later on down the line to add a nice little boost to the roster. So it's not done yet. It really is not done yet, so we will discuss all of that today right here on the SmackDown Live Review. Thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. Uh, you guys are still slaying the Patreon. You guys are unbelievable, man. I, I got, I, I think for the month we got almost 80 new patrons, man. I checked the stats today. 80 new fucking patrons for the Patreon pledges, man. That's a long list of shout-outs I'll be doing on Off The Script this weekend. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Joe Cronin Show, my buddy Joe Cronin, who was actually at the TD Gardens tonight, uh, sitting right behind JBL, uh, apparently. I, I wish he would have really fucking stuck it to him uh, on SmackDown Live tonight, but uh, I know Joe's a professional, and he probably won't be doing that there live. Um, but he actually texted me today that he, that he thinks everything with the YouTube monetization and the ads is going to get better. Apparently when YouTube kind of reset everybody and put that 10,000 view threshold that they reset every fucking channel on the server and that's why we weren't seeing ads in the videos. So hopefully as the week goes on, we will start to see things stabilize back to normal. I'm crossing my fingers on that one, so we'll see. So he told me that little bit of information today, but still, you guys are fucking kicking ass on the Patreon, man. Long list of shoutouts coming. If you guys want to be part of the Patreon page... You guys know the deal, man. www.patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Thank you guys so very much, man. I love each and every fucking one of you. You're making everything so much easier in these tough times, man. And uh, I thank everybody for believing in me and feeling that I am worth it to be pledging monthly, man. I thank you guys so much. And I, don't, I honestly don't even know what to say at this point. Thank you guys so much. Early access to Off the Script. You guys get early access to anything that I have uh, uh, decided to upload. You guys get exclusive rights to the Discord server. I better see all 80 of you motherfuckers in that Discord server, man. I was in there last night for a little bit as I was laying in bed. Uh, I, I, need, I need to start, uh, you know, appearing more often in there just to say what's up to you guys. But uh, you guys do get exclusive rights to the Discord server. So make sure you guys take advantage of all that. And all this extra shit that I've been collecting from these crates, I'm going to fucking bundle up for a select few of you guys, man, because this it's not doing nothing for me. I just put it away in the closet. So DVDs, and I got a whole fucking DVD rack of WWE DVDs I want to fucking give away just because I don't want them anymore. So you guys are going to be getting perks as soon as I get myself stabilized. So uh, it, it, good stuff is coming. So thank you all to... You know, everybody that pledged on the Patreon page. Another great way to support, man, is Barbershop Window. We are an official partner of Barbershop Window and Pro Wrestling Tees. We are official partners. Barbershopwindow.com slash JD. Uh, no, I'm sorry. That's the wrong link. I am sorry. I am a fucking goon. Barbershopwindow.com slash off the script for your t-shirts. $19.99. They ship worldwide no matter where you are. All shapes and sizes. Uh, the JD is Negan t-shirt. The... Get off my TV hit list, the Roman Reigns. That Roman Reigns t-shirt's going to come in handy, man. Let, let, let's start getting that Roman Reigns shirt up there. That was a big one at WrestleCon and, the, and a big one during WrestleMania weekend. So the Roman Reigns get off my TV design is still very much 
uh, in style, I should say. So it's barbershopwindow.com slash off the script. And then always, you guys know the deal, should be ingrained in your fucking skulls right now. Audible trial. Audibletrial.com slash off the script. Make sure you guys get your free audio book compatible with iPhone and Android. You guys are kicking ass on that as well for the month of April. One free audio book. You guys got one free audio book out of 180,000 different choices. So choose wisely, my dear fellow listeners. That's audibletrial.com slash off the script. It's free. Make sure you guys take advantage of that this evening because free is always good, man. And if you guys decide to cancel the service, you get to keep your book no matter what. And I'm hearing great things each and every day about the A.J. Lee new book that's out, Crazy is My Superpower. Make sure you guys go and check that out. If you want it for free, you guys got it with Audible. So thank you all who show love to Audible each and every time I mention it. Now let's get on with SmackDown, man. Let me go over my initial thoughts of this entire superstar shakeup now that we are finally done and over with with this complete fiasco. What do I think of the superstar shakeup now that it's over with? Shouldn't have happened. Shouldn't have happened. WWE wanted to shake things up. They wanted to shake things up a little bit. But they did it in a very, very weak, lazy, uncreative fashion. If they wanted to do this, we all could have lasted another couple of months and WWE really could have thought out just a simple draft. If you want to have something yearly, it's okay to do the draft. It doesn't got to be a big, elaborate draft. But I put blame on WWE Creative. Now, a draft realistically should not be happening every year, okay? With WWE's lack of direction, it probably will be every year if they wanted it to be, but it really doesn't need to be. And I blame that solely on WWE creative. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. Vince McMahon is a senile old fucking asshole who doesn't know what he wants minute to minute. Things are changing. And apparently, the reports were true, that this entire superstar shakeup was conceived Monday afternoon, four hours before Monday Night Raw went on the air. And it shows. It really does show. If WWE has creative direction and long thought out, well planned storylines, a draft doesn't need to happen every year. But if you want to have one every year, then have a fucking draft. Okay? Make it a big deal. Whatever you did here this week, it just raises more questions on top of questions. It makes WWE a complete jumbled mess. Situations like this... Now, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say it was a fucking complete failure. But it wasn't good. It wasn't good at all. You know, you, you want to do stuff like this, it's got to be thought out. And you got to put your attention to the things that need your attention. Still, after all of this, my worries about the women's division and the tag team division on SmackDown are still there. I don't care if you drafted Charlotte. You just traded Charlotte for Alexa Bliss. Everything else is the same. And you added Tamina, who nobody even remembers, so you gotta do double duty for people to realize... Who this person is. It's great that you added another female. But you added another female that hasn't been active for two years. You got a lot of work there, WWE, to really get the crowd behind her and get the crowd, you know, on board with her. And then they hype up Lana. They hype up Lana as this... I, I guess like a ballroom dancer, ballet dancer, showgirl type gimmick that she's got going on. That's all fantastic. I can look at Lana all day long. But you're adding Lana to a division that is, I guess, in the midst of, uh, you know, this revolution, right? You got the Beckys and you got the Naomis and you got the Natalias and you got the Charlottes, right? Those are women wrestlers. Can Lana wrestle? Are, are you comfortable enough to put Lana in the division merely as just 
Someone who's going to garner a pop that really isn't going to do much in between the ropes. I, I mean, to me, Lana's great. Lana's fantastic. She's got a personality that I'm sure could get over, but you're treading Eva Marie territory there. Because I don't know how well she's going to wrestle, and you put her in the ring with women who can actually wrestle, it's going to look like it did on Monday night with Nia Jax. Not really a big fan of that. Not really a big fan of that at all. So the women's division on SmackDown looks identical. Identical to the SmackDown division before this shakeup, just with Charlotte there. Not really much of a shakeup, WWE. Not one, not, not one at all. There's no shakeup whatsoever. You add a new face and you trade a heel for a heel. It's not what I call a shakeup. Now, Monday Night Raw's roster got a shakeup. They got Mickey James. They got Alexa Bliss, right? Just by that alone, you got new intriguing matchups. Now, I want to keep in mind, and I want you guys to be aware that the. Women's division could look drastically different following this 32-woman tournament coming on the WWE Network. I was hearing rumors of Peyton Royce and and uh, Billy Kay coming to SmackDown Live, which I would be on board with. We got Peyton Royce, who is a student of Lance Storm, which, I mean, speaks for itself. And Billy Kay and Peyton Royce are best friends. They went to school together, three years apart. Billy Kay is 27, Peyton Royce is 24. So that's a nice little that's a nice little uh, team you got there that they can learn off one another and get better together. They could add a lot of dynamic to the SmackDown Live women's roster. At that point, you got a division. The way you look at it now, I don't see much of a division at all. You got Naomi, you got Charlotte, you got Natalia, and you got Becky. You got four women there who can go. Four women who can wrestle. And then you got Tamina. All right, and then you got Carmella. Crickets. Crickets. And then you're going to add Lana. Not really what I call a competitive division. So you can see my lack of excitement, and you could probably wonder why. Now, if you add Billy Kay and Peyton Royce and you develop them on TV, that adds a nice little wrinkle to it. And remember, you got Nikki Bella. Nikki Bella is not retired. Nikki Bella is not retired. She's taking a few months off. She had a little soreness in her neck. She got engaged to John Cena, right? So they're probably taking a break together and they're recuperating. Cena's filming. Nikki's resting. Nikki will be back. So you got another baby face in Nikki Bella once she comes back. She is not retired yet. She's not retired. You got to believe Nikki wants at least one more shot at the top before she calls it a day in WWE. So you're going to add Nikki Bella to the division. At that point, if you're going to add Peyton Royce and Billy Kay to the division after you conclude this ma- this um, women's tournament on the WWE Network, I, I think you'll be fine. On Monday Night Raw's side... You could probably add one woman from the div- from the tournament to the division. And remember, Paige will be cleared to go before the end of the summer. Paige will be back on Monday Night Raw. No question, she will be back on Monday Night Raw. She's got a lot of talk around her. She's got a lot of buzz around her. And I'm sure WWE's going to want to put her on the number one show, Monday Night Raw. So Paige will be back. She'll add a nice little wrinkle to the, SmackDown, or to the Monday Night Raw women's division. So that would be boosted up just by her being there. So still, they didn't rectify any of the problems that were there before this shakeup. They just basically switched names and at the end of the day, everything looks the same. If you want real change, you're going to have to get more people into the division. Because right now, to me, nothing has changed. You look at the tag team division. What has changed with the tag team division on this show? Nothing has changed with the tag team division on this show. You got the Usos. You got American Alpha. They added the New Day, which is great. That adds a nice little wrinkle to the tag team division. You got Alpha New Day. You got New Day Usos, right? So that's that's a nice mixture of intriguing matchups you got there. But they also added the Shining Stars. 
They added Epico and Primo. Now you guys were telling me, oh JD, you know they're, they're not called the Shining Stars. They they were they were called by their their real names, Epico and Primo. But that's who they were. They're the Shining Stars. Doesn't matter who the fuck they are. Doesn't matter what you call them. They are traveling real estate agents. Not needed on SmackDown. Just like they were garbage when they were Epico and Primo before Los Matadores. Then they turned them into fucking mock bullfighters with fucking El Torito. Like that went anywhere. You got fucking, you got them dressed up as fucking Tino Santana wannabes. Like that was gonna go anywhere, right? And then they, then they became fucking Puerto Rico real estate agents selling you timeshare, right? Does that timeshare include seven days, six nights of Titus catering? I hope so, bro. Because you ain't getting me to your fucking real estate down there. You know? If you're not including Titus's blueberry pie, I don't want none of what you got, bro. Seriously. All right? And that better be full bar. Full bar for this entire trip. If I'm going to listen to what the Shining Stars got to say, they got nothing. Shining Stars are just as bad as a fucking... Roach-infested one-star motel. Garbage. They're not going to add anything to that division because of how they've been perceived on Monday Night Raw. Why would you think otherwise? They could be talented, they could be this and that, but when they come out to fucking crickets, I'm going to be sitting there like this and be like, yeah, some tag team division we got there, Road Dog." Now, I, I will say this. I will be giving them a chance if SmackDown is truly the land of opportunity Hopefully, SmackDown can make these guys into a decent, legit fucking tag team. Because we need decent, legit fucking tag teams on SmackDown Live. So we got New Day, we got the Real Estate Agents, we got American Alpha, and we got the Usos. Heath Slater and Rhino went over to Monday Night Raw. Who else do we got? We got the Ascension. Is WWE going to push the Ascension? Are we finally going to get the Ascension to be fucking moved up the ranks? We got Brizongo. You're going to push Brizongo? Because if you don't, and you stay on the fucking course that you've been before this shakeup, the Ascension is nothing but a fucking waste. Brizongo's nothing but a fucking joke. The Shining Stars have done nothing on Monday Night Raw. Who's going to believe that they're going to do anything on SmackDown Live? And why are the fans going to care unless you make me care? So that's three teams right there that mean nothing to anybody. Then you got the New Day, you got Alpha, and you got the Usos. Great. Three teams. Three teams does not make a division. And what does WWE do? Instead of drafting fucking Sin Cara, right, and Kalisto together on one brand, they already had them on one brand as of last night. All right, the Lucha Dragons could have been a nice little addition to the Monday Night Raw tag team division. That would have been a great way to move another team over to solidify the SmackDown Live Tag Team Division, but of course not. As of last night, Kalisto and Sin Cara were on the same brand. What did WWE do tonight? They moved Sin Cara to SmackDown. For what? For what? What sense does that make? How does that make any sense? What is he doing on his own on SmackDown Live? Nothing. Nothing. It's like you could have either used it for the Cruiserweight Division... Or he could have used them in a tag team on Monday Night Raw, get the Lucha Dragons back together, and move another team over to SmackDown that could have used a nice change of scenery. Enzo and Cass, Scallows and Anderson, right? But no, WWE, they got to move Sin Cara back over to SmackDown, which realistically is a fucking nothing move. That's a wasted trade right there. What did that do for anybody? Didn't do nothing for SmackDown. Didn't do anything for Sin Cara. Absolutely ass backwards move. Don't understand it. No, but WWE really thought long and hard about this superstar shakeup, though, right? The fuck out of here, man. Give me a fucking break. Now, now, the important moves here. Jinder Mahal is a fucking waste. I feel like Vince McMahon is getting a fucking hard on every time Jinder Mahal's veins get bigger and bigger and bigger. Why is this guy on SmackDown? Oh, I'll tell you why. Because SmackDown was in Boston tonight. Rob Gronkowski was in the fucking crowd again, front row. Why did they move Jinder Mahal over? Uh, let's book him against Mojo Raleigh tonight, because uh, Gronk is in the front row. Who cares about Jinder Mahal? The guy's got no fucking personality. What is he going to add to SmackDown that he 
didn't add on on Monday Night Raw. Give me a break, bro. Guy was a fucking waste on Raw. He's gonna be a waste on SmackDown Live. Another wasted move that WWE has given SmackDown Live. As we discussed last night, Dean Ambrose went over to Monday Night Raw. Kevin Owens went over to SmackDown. It was the only move that made sense. It was the only move that made sense. So the U.S. title is on SmackDown. The IC title is on Monday Night Raw. Good on him. I think Kevin Owens is going to do very well on SmackDown Live. But it really erases, and uh, no pun intended here, deletes the proposed plan of Owens, Triple H, and Samoa Joe. All right, so Kevin Owens is pretty much shedding all of that, and now he's on his own. They move Sami Zayn over to SmackDown, which is oh, fucking fine by me. I don't give a shit. The matchups that we could see on a grander scale on SmackDown Live, Zayn versus Owens in a big match situation, right? I don't mind it. I know SmackDown Live will, will take good care of that. I don't mind it. A lot of people had a problem with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn being on the same brand. I don't give a fuck, dude. I don't care. Leave it the way it is. They said it. They're destined to fight forever. Why not live up to that? Sami Zayn versus Styles. Sami Zayn versus Shelton Benjamin, who we, who we, we have yet to see. He's coming. Remember, he's going to be adding a lot to SmackDown Live as well. So, don't forget about Shelton Benjamin. He's cleared to go. He was at WrestleCon. He was interviewed by several different outlets. He is cleared to go. Why we didn't see him during this shakeup, I don't know. I don't know what they're waiting for. The guy's ready. The guy is signed to a contract. So, where the fuck is he? Give me your best. Don't hold anything back here. Remember, Shelton Benjamin, hopefully, will be coming to SmackDown Live. Zayn versus... Uh, Ziggler, Zayn versus Ty Dillinger, Zayn versus Nakamura too. Come on, bro. I like that move a lot. Sammy is going to be enhanced. Hopefully, they utilize Sami Zayn the way he should have been utilized on Monday Night Raw. Another move I liked is Rusev coming over to SmackDown Live. They weren't doing jack shit with him on Monday Night Raw directionless, fed to Roman Reigns in the League of Nations. They got him feuding with fucking Jinder Mahal and teaming with Jinder Mahal. Guy went from pr probably being a, the, one of the best heels at the time he was U.S. champion, and then ever since he lost to John Cena, he has never recovered. They tried to recover him, but then they just fed him to Roman Reigns. Now he doesn't have any of that bullshit on his side, he's now starting a clean slate, he's coming back from injury, he should be 100% healthy in two to three months, Rusev is going to do very well on SmackDown Live, that's another move that a lot of people did not see, or they just brushed off, that's going to be a good move for SmackDown Live, Rusev has the capability of being a diamond in the rough on SmackDown Live, and I fully think that he will be utilized and he will have a new lease on life, just like Sami Zayn, on Tuesday nights. All right? The other thing I am not really all too keen about is the fact that WWE is promoting this payback pay-per-view. And I feel like this payback pay-per-view is really raising more questions than anything else. Number one, there should not be a pay-per-view in the midst of a superstar shakeup. I don't think WWE really thought about that before they came up with this entire concept. Because it's just making things confusing. And people are scratching their heads. And they're wondering what the fuck is going on. They're calling Payback a Monday Night Raw branded exclusive pay-per-view. But then we got we got AJ Styles. Oh, not AJ Styles. We got um, Kevin Owens now on SmackDown. Versus Chris Jericho. Who is Monday Night Raw. We got Bray Wyatt who is Monday Night Raw. Battling Randy Orton who is on SmackDown. So, it really doesn't make any sense. So, WWE really should cut that shit out and really try and erase people's memories. Instead of calling it a Monday Night Raw branded exclusive pay-per-view, it should really be Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night SmackDown Live present payback. Because we got superstars from both brands appearing on the show. So, they got to do something with that and rectify that. WWE tried to rectify that the best that they could tonight, via Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan comes out 
in the opening segment and says that we're going to get a triple threat match between AJ Styles, Baron Corbin, and Sami Zayn. The winner of this match will go on to be the number one contender against whoever the United States champion is because the title's being defended at payback with Kevin Owens defending against Chris Jericho. So the winner of that match, Daniel Bryan said, will be contracted to SmackDown. So there you go. You know, I don't know what that means. It could go either way. If Kevin Owens is going to lose the match, is he still contracted to SmackDown? If Jericho wins, obviously he's the United States champion. He will be contracted to SmackDown. But what if they didn't, they didn't make this clear. They didn't really discuss that. And they didn't give you any, any uh, explanation to this. And what if Kevin Owens loses? Now, I don't expect him to lose, but we as the audience should really be aware that that is a possible situation. What if Kevin Owens loses? Is he still part of SmackDown Live? I don't know. You know? Because if Jericho, who is Monday Night Raw right now, wins the United States title... He's going to come over to SmackDown as the U.S. champion. But what if Kevin Owens loses? Is he going to be on SmackDown? Is Monday Night Raw going to be down one man? Or is he going to go over to Monday Night Raw and fill Jericho's spot? See, these are the things that I think about. You might not have been thinking about that when Daniel Bryan was explaining this entire situation. But I give WWE, I don't know, a C in trying to explain that. But the payback pay-per-view is adding more questions to our minds than anything and i really don't understand that it should be a dual branded pay-per-view at this point it really should or there should not be a pay-per-view altogether I, I, we don't need a pay-per-view three weeks following wrestlemania we don't we don't don't understand it and wwe again shot themselves in the foot like they always do every now and then don't understand it but those are the things that happened on this show as far as the United States Championship, I guess we'll find out at Payback. Uh, the WWE Championship, I guess we'll find out at Payback. Uh, and also, I'm sure you guys are aware, you know, these, these matches seem to be a little bit predictable now. I mean, does anybody expect Bray Wyatt to take the WWE title back to Monday Night Raw if he's a Raw superstar? I mean, clearly we're not going to see Brock Lesnar, the Universal Champion, and Bray Wyatt, the WWE Champion, on the same show. So, it makes that match, out of all the matches, predictable. In some sense, it makes the U.S. title match predictable as well, because I just don't see Chris Jericho taking the title off Kevin Owens. There's too many questions there. So, predictability for payback is really abundant right now. Another thing that I want to make you guys aware of, and I don't know how many of you are feeling the same way, with this superstar shakeup. I feel that the WWE title and the Universal title are pretty much non-existent. They didn't make any mention of the titles, the main titles on each show, which, I mean, I don't really, I don't really care for because the feuds are laid out for Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt. Brock Lesnar's all fucking hunting deer somewhere in Canada. It, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter, but... You know, they are the two biggest titles of each brand, and they've been made to look pretty much non-important. Now, my main gripe was you got to make the mid-card titles look really strong. They presented the U.S. title and the United States, uh, the United States title and the IC title in the main event of Monday Night Raw in a subpar match, but it was in the main event. They made a big deal of the U.S. title tonight in a triple threat match with Sami Zayn, AJ Styles, and Baron Corbin. So those mid-card titles were pretty much pushed to the forefront. And they're going to need to be. Because with the WWE title now appearing on Monday Night Raw, being that Bray Wyatt is there, you gotta really make something else feel important in its place on SmackDown. I.e., a.k.a. the United States Championship. Right? And the Universal Championship's not gonna be presented because Brock Lesnar's gonna be out for a little bit. So, again, there's your explanation for that. But I just wanted to throw that out there as well. I like that the mid-card titles are, are receiving a little bit of love right now. But uh, it should be like that all the time. It shouldn't be like that simply because of a, uh, 
uh, I would say, a misconception here with this brand split or this roster shakeup, all because the WWE title is going to be focused on Monday Night Raw for a little bit, or because Brock Lesnar is the Universal Champion and he's off uh, fucking uh, chasing Bigfoot somewhere, you know? So I, I just wanted to make sure you guys are aware of that as well. Other than that, Charlotte made a uh, you know uh, an appearance on SmackDown Live tonight in the women's division. We already discussed that. There really wasn't anything else as far as moves go. There really wasn't anything else as far as moves go. A lot of what I wanted happened. Zayn, Owens, New Day. Uh, we got Kalisto on Monday Night Raw. Apollo Crews on Monday Night Raw. Charlotte Alexa Bliss. So a lot of the stuff that I discussed in my notes on Friday's episode of Off The Script came true. So, a lot of what I discussed made sense. WWE thought so as well. They went with it. I'm not saying that I'm some fucking mind reader. I'm not saying that I got some fucking crystal ball. All you do is got to watch the product, and you'll see what happens and what goes where and what should go where and what makes sense. WWE always doesn't make the, the choice that makes the most sense, but in this case, I, I got some of what we discussed right. So, I'll take that as a W in my case. But let me know what you guys think of the roster shakeup or the superstar shakeup. Are you pleased with it at the end? D did it underwhelm everybody? Because I, I feel underwhelmed. You know, I, I really didn't think it was necessary. I honestly thought WWE should have kept everything the same. And they should have just had a draft. Make the draft what you build towards every year. Make the draft your big thing. Not this fucking roster shakeup that clearly was not thought of and... WWE just sent fucking guys out on Raw and SmackDown. Yeah, this is our shakeup. That's all it was. But let me know what you guys think down below. Quickly, let's go over this show. Randy Orton versus Eric Rowan started the show. Uh, this wasn't really anything all that special. I'm done with this shit, dude. I, I really am. I, I am so over this shit. Who cares? Another thing with this roster shakeup. Bray Wyatt's on Monday Night Raw. Why is Eric Rowan by himself... This guy will fail miserably on his own. Nobody gives a shit about Eric Rowan on his own. Now, the WWE, they got a winner in Luke Harper solo. And I want to see Luke Harper succeed solo. I think there's more worth in Luke Harper in the long run solo. But being that you move Bray Wyatt to Monday Night Raw, you're pretty much wasting a talent in Eric Rowan. So now, at this point, WWE is pretty much going to be forced... To put Luke Harper and Eric Rowan back all the way to square one and team them up just to give the tag team division more depth. Do you see what I'm talking about? WWE just goes around and around and around in circles, failing to create new stars. Eric Rowan is not going to be, be created into the next big thing. Luke Harper was really gaining some momentum for himself, and WWE pulled that rug right out from underneath him. And they haven't done really anything with him since. So now they're going to be forced to take a Luke Harper, who clearly to everybody is ready to break out on his own, and be forced to put him back with Eric Rowan, because you can't let Eric Rowan fucking sink out there by himself. So what is the best thing for this right now? What is the best thing for both of these guys right now? Eric Rowan ain't going to go anywhere on his own. Luke Harper, clearly, they're not going to push him on, on, on his own. So, pair them together. Put them back. Rowan and, and, and Harper, back together again. And give the tag team division some depth. You might as well do it, because they're more valuable in the tag team division right now than what WWE is going to do with them on their own. Again, just throwing that out there to you guys. And Randy Orton wins uh, with a... Uh, well, via DQ, because Bray Wyatt interfered. He... He showed up on the Titantron and distracted Randy Orton. At that point, Randy Orton went right outside to go grab Eric Rowan and continue the match, but he got nailed with steel steps, and that was pretty much it. Eric Rowan did his uh, sidewalk slam finisher on Randy Orton, and that was that. Really nothing to it. I'm over it. I can't wait for it to be over. The Randy Orton Bray Wyatt saga has fucking nosedived right into a mountain. Nobody gives a shit. I can't wait for it to be over. I completely missed the entire beginning of this show. Kevin Owens came out in a brand new suit, fully shaved, which I have to do because my beard's getting too fucking long. And he got a nice little haircut. He's got the U.S. title. 
He was talking about how Canada is much better than the United States. He says that if anybody had a problem with what he's saying, then someone should come to the ring and stop him, or at least try to stop him. He said that he would be the face of America. This led Baron Corbin coming out. He walked out. He said that Kevin Owens could beat up the SmackDown roster, but he couldn't beat him up. He said that he made Dean Ambrose move over to Monday Night Raw because he beat him so badly in the street fight that they had a week before. And Ambrose beat Owens on Monday Night Raw in the main event last night. And Dean Ambrose sent Kevin Owens pack into SmackDown. So, Baron Corbin throwing fucking needles at Kevin Owens. Corbin knows that he can beat Owens and thinks he deserves a title match because he didn't get one against Dean Ambrose. Sami Zayn came out, and I loved Kevin Owens' reaction. You gotta be fucking kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. This can't be happening right now. People love Sami Zayn being there. We all pop for Sami Zayn being there. He's on SmackDown Live. The best move out of the entire superstar shakeup. Definitely. Corbin says that nobody cares about Zayn. AJ Styles came out. A good two minutes of just fucking AJ Styles' chance. I'm not sure if this is a legit babyface turn, but you might as well do it. AJ Styles, in my honest opinion, is a babyface on SmackDown Live. He walked down to the ring and says that this is about him. It's not the Kevin Owens show. This is SmackDown Live. This is the show that AJ Styles built. This is his show. Daniel Bryan came walking out. He says that whoever wins the match between Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho at Payback will earn a spot on SmackDown Live. Bryan booked Styles, Zayn, and Corbin in a triple threat match with the winner becoming the number one contender for the U.S. title following the Payback pay-per-view. Tag team title match tonight on SmackDown Live. The Usos versus American Alpha. And I think I am in the, I am in the majority here with everybody in saying that I am over these two teams feuding. Please, give me variety. That's all I want. Can you please push Brizongo? Can you please push Fandango and Tyler Breeze? Can you please push the Ascension? Two quality teams that if you build up correctly, I think they will go places. You're going to have to use them. Otherwise, you're not going to have any division at all. And we're going to be seeing rematch after rematch after rematch. I'm done. Tired of it. It's over. Okay? Usos beat American Alpha again. They failed to capture the tag team titles on SmackDown. Again, Usos win. Shining Stars make their appearance here in this match. After the match, they run out and attack Gable. Then they hit their finisher to Chad Gable. Uh, in the end of this match, Gable got rid of Jey Uso towards the end of the match. Jimmy with a super kick. Jay hit the big splash, the big Samoan splash for the victory. Usos get the one, two, three. One thing I want to mention here, I like that American Alpha is using that that uh, Steiner Brothers-esque Bulldog as their finisher. I think it's much more effective than the Grand Amplitude. They could still use the Grand Amplitude, but I didn't really think that was a, a, an impactful finisher. It looked good. It looked good when Jason Jordan was throwing the opponents and Gable was catching them into a fucking bridging suplex. I thought it was very nice, but as an impactful finisher, it really wasn't my cup of coffee, bro. I like that Steiner S Bulldog. I, I think that goes well. Uh, I, I think it just pays great homage to the Steiner brothers who were a great tag team in the WWE. And I think it works. I like it. Hope they keep it. But the Usos retain the titles. Shining Stars, Epico, and Primo. Uh, they came out and pretty much showed everybody that they are the newest members of the SmackDown Live tag team roster. Nobody cared. I certainly don't. As I told you guys in the beginning. You're going to have to do a lot more to make me believe in fucking Epico and Primo. Mojo Raleigh versus Jinder Mahal. The only reason why this match happened, the only reason why Jinder Mahal was moved here was because of the ending of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. I'm sure this was a last-minute decision. I'm sure this was some fucking goon. Who, where could we move Jinder Mahal? Should we move Jinder Mahal? Should we move, should we move Jinder Mahal? You know, he, his veins are so big. He reminds me of Roman Reigns. But where's Apollo Crews? Uh, where's Apollo Crews? He's my dental buddy. Uh, Apollo Chews. <laughs> Your teeth. Anyway. Uh, Jinder Mahal. Why is he on SmackDown Live? Because, just like I said, just like Kevin Dunn said, uh, the ending of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, though, uh, Mojo Raleigh is on SmackDown. We should recreate the ending and build from the ending of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. 
Give me a fucking break. And then, oh, it's in Boston and Gronkowski's in the crowd. Give me a fucking break, man. Who gives a shit? Really, who gives a flying fuck? So obviously, Jinder Mahal goes over to Rob Gronkowski, right? He gets beer thrown in his face. Some fucking, uh, some sport. Jinder Mahal, right? Uh, I don't know, I don't know what is worse. Getting cheap beer thrown in your, in your face or Rob Gronkowski paying for a fucking $10 Budweiser. I don't, f which is worse, you know? Anyway, Mojo Raleigh beat Jinder Mahal here after the interruption there at ringside. Raleigh hit a massive big boot in the corner for the win. Pin them one, two, three. I am not on board with Mojo Raleigh. I'm just not. I'm just not. If you're a fan of Mojo Raleigh, God bless you. But uh, the only reason why this guy's got a job is because he's big, he's an ex-football player, and he's friends with Rob Gronkowski. That's it. Why is Mojo Raleigh in the WWE? That's the reason why. Other than that, garbage. Shane McMahon came down to the ring, opened the second hour of the show. He said that SmackDown Live is a better show than Raw. Most nights it is. He thanked the SmackDown stars who had been moved over to, uh, to SmackDown from Raw. He brought out the entire women's roster. At this point, only four women came out, and I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. They all wanted to know who is the newest member of the division. There was some bickering between Naomi and James Ellsworthless. McMahon announced that Tamina trolled everybody. Oh, hey, this is the daughter of a, of a WWE Hall of Famer. Someone who has family prestige and someone who has the lineage. You know, all that fucking, uh, all that verbiage he used, right? Everybody uh, immediately thought it was Charlotte. Out comes Tamita. He raised everybody's fucking emotions, and Shane just fucking dropped everybody's emotions like a sack of potatoes, man. So, Tamina comes out. Crickets, right? She's big. She'll add depth. Is she good in the ring? Oh, fuck, fuck do I know? I haven't seen her in two years. Hopefully, she still knows how to wrestle. Everybody thought it was Charlotte. Charlotte eventually was announced. Charlotte uh, was called the biggest trade in the entire shakeup. Might as well be. Not to me, it's not. The biggest trade that we've seen in this entire shakeup, to be brutally honest with you, is Sami Zayn. That's who I think is the biggest trade because that's who needed to be moved the most. He suffered so badly that SmackDown Live is going to just be a fucking breath of fresh air, not only for us, but for him. Charlotte's going to be winning titles on SmackDown Live. No question. She's already at the top of that division. No question. But what move is going to benefit the superstar and the brand most? Sami Zayn is going to add so much depth to SmackDown Live. Mark my words. WWE announced Sin Cara and Rusev traded to SmackDown. We already went over that. Aiden English was in the ring. He uh, pretty much... Uh, Threw shade at Simon Gotch, saying that he's here by himself. Uh, before he even started singing, which they uh, had rumored to be going back to him with the singing gimmick that he had in NXT. He tried to come out and sing, but Ty Dillinger came out and disrupted him, thank Christ. Ty Dillinger versus Aiden English, very quick match. Uh, tiebreaker for the win, 1-2-3, perfect 10, gets another victory on SmackDown Live. Lana is coming to SmackDown Live. Don't know how well of a move that's going to be, but we'll find out. She's good to look at, but is she good in the ring? We'll find out. Probably the best segment of the night, obviously, Shinsuke Nakamura. Dolph Ziggler was in the ring. Uh, he was cutting a promo about staying on SmackDown Live. He bragged about being the best superstar on SmackDown Live. Nobody does it better than him on SmackDown Live. Shinsuke Nakamura comes out. M fucking huge pop. Everybody fucking sing along with his theme. He is the most over guy in the fucking company right now. Clearly the most over guy in the company. And I'm so happy that he's on the main roster. I'm so happy he's on SmackDown Live. I, I even posted on Twitter, you know, I mentioned a year. Some of you guys actually said, you know, JD quicker than that. Six months. You give this guy a run at a major title and a major title victory... This is your number one man in the company. And I'm talking about taking over Cena's spot. I'm talking about fucking dethroning fucking no man gains. No matter if he doesn't speak English all that well or not, he's gotten better in that aspect. But Nakamura, based on everything else, can most certainly get away with not speaking the English language all that well. Guy's got every fucking aspect you want out of a WWE superstar. This guy's got number one written all over. 
Number one written all over him. Every time he comes out, that's all I think about. Give this guy six months, a run at a major title, and a WWE Championship victory reign. I think you got your number one man right there. Vince wants to find a number one guy. He's staring right at you. The crowd's fucking letting you know who it is, Vince. It ain't Roman. It ain't Roman. Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah, he might be 37 years old, but you wish that Roman was getting the reactions organically that Shinsuke Nakamura is getting. When Braun Strowman shoving fucking Roman Reigns off a loading dock as he's strapped to a gurney and people are chanting, you deserve it. I don't think that's the man they want, bro. So there you go. Nakamura comes down to the ring. Ziggler, and I laughed at this, asked him if he could help him. Who the hell are you? And Nakamura grabbed the microphone, and before he even uttered the fucking word out of his mouth, the fans were answering Nakamura, the fans were answer, answering Ziggler, rather, for Nakamura. So Ziggler said, who the hell do you think you are? Fans just started chanting, Nakamura! Great. Just great interaction from the Boston crowd. Nakamura grabbed the microphone and says that he is Shinsuke Nakamura. Ziggler then tried to go for a super kick. Nakamura caught it, had Ziggler on one leg, tossed him back. Ziggler then retreated to a chorus of boos, and Nakamura bowed and did his fucking thing in the ring with the music playing and the crowd just singing along. Great. Great segment. I like this feud for both men, okay? This is going to help Ziggler get that heel reaction that you want because Nakamura is so over. You know, Nakamura is working with somebody who can work his fucking ass off and bring uh, a great match out of the entire thing, which is going to be a great match. They're going to tear the fucking house down whenever they go at it. You know, that, that was the dark match last week. Uh, I can't wait to actually see it on a pay-per-view. It's going to be very good. The one drawback here is that Ziggler is so talented that WWE has him pegged in this position that when all the new guys come in, their first feud is always Dolph Ziggler. Now, I wouldn't necessarily look at that as a negative to me, you know, from someone who's looking at it from the outside looking in. I think that's a great role for Dolph Ziggler because that speaks volumes about how much trust WWE has in Dolph Ziggler that they always put him with the new guys because they know how great of a worker he is. And I think this is just going to prove very well uh, you know, just like everybody else. They did it with Corbin. They did it with fucking Tyler Breeze. They did it with uh, everybody. It's going to be a great match. But uh, it also, on the hind side, it really just kind of shows you that Dolph Ziggler is just stuck in mid-card purgatory. He ain't going anywhere. But WWE trusts him enough and values him enough to put him against a Nakamura, to put him against all the talent coming up from NXT because people can learn from Dolph Ziggler. People can get a great match out of Dolph Ziggler. But... Like I said, the drawback there is that he's stuck in mid-card fucking hell. He ain't going anywhere. He ain't challenged for no world titles. He ain't going anywhere. That's his position. He's either got to love it and deal with it, or when his contract's up, say, you know what? I'm done. I'm worth more than this. I'm worth better than this. And go to the indies and do his thing down there. But that's a great role for him. Nakamura Ziggler, I'm excited for it. I think it's a great fucking feud. I think it's a match that could tear the house down. Can't wait to see it, and I like it. I like it. Not good for Ziggler, but listen, you gotta look at that. You gotta look at it from a business perspective, and it's good for the company. Number one contender triple threat match: AJ Styles, Baron Corbin, and Sami Zayn. AJ Styles wins this match. He is the new number one contender for the U.S. title. Now we just gotta see if Kevin Owens defeats Chris Jericho at Payback. Baron Corbin was built up just like in the last triple threat match he had with Ziggler and. AJ Styles, that I believe was the last SmackDown of 2016, that great triple threat match that they had. Corbin was the same way. He was dominating through most of the match in that match. He was dominating here in most of the match. Corbin being built up as a monster. Corbin getting his spots in as the biggest man in the match. Sami Zayn and AJ Styles working together to try to take Corbin out so that they can concentrate on just themselves. Corbin was always... There, hitting the big power moves, taking one guy out of the match, solely concentrating on either uh, on Sami Zayn or AJ Styles. It came down to Styles and Zayn at one point. Zayn 
hit one of the best Blue Thunder Bombs I have ever seen, man. And a lot of that had to do with AJ Styles. AJ Styles sold the shit out of that one, man. Holy shit. And one of these days, Sammy, I swear to God, you're going to win with that fucking move. If, if WWE is smart, if WWE is smart, if Sami Zayn is in a big match situation fighting for a title and it's coming down to the fucking wire and you want an explosive ending, have him win with the Blue Thunder Bomb, man. It would fucking mark everybody out. Gotta happen one of these days, man, but... Styles went for the Styles Clash on Sami Zayn. Zayn blocked it. Zayn hit Corbin with the Heluva Kick. He went to the outside. He turned around. Styles jumped off the ropes for the Phenomenal Forearm. Nailed it beautifully. Zayn sold the shit out of that as well. One, two, three. Sami Zayn pinned. AJ Styles is the new number one contender for the U.S. title. I I'm guessing this is a consolation prize right now because... AJ Styles has nothing to do in the meantime. You can't put him in a WWE Championship feud right now, being that AJ is on SmackDown, and Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt are going to be battling it out on both shows. Right? Bray Wyatt's on Raw. Randy Orton's got to go over to Raw to feud with Bray Wyatt for the WWE Championship. We all want AJ Styles back in the WWE Championship picture. This is a consolation right now. I'll take it for the meantime. Not going to complain about a possible AJ Styles-Kevin Owens match for the United States Championship, man. I'm not going to complain whatsoever. AJ Styles will be back in the WWE Championship picture. In fact, the way things are going right now and the way things have pretty much, you know, been laid out, I would have AJ Styles win the WWE Championship sometime this summer. I would have him hold it till WrestleMania. I would have Shinsuke Nakamura win the Royal Rumble. And I would have Nakamura versus AJ Styles at WrestleMania 34. Can you just imagine the pop AJ Styles would get by winning the title? And then, can you imagine the pop Shinsuke Nakamura would get in Philadelphia at the Royal Rumble, winning the Royal Rumble, securing the match that we all want, a match that Vince McMahon would make fucking, Jesus Christ, probably the best WrestleMania main event ever. He let those guys go. You want something that's going to rival Omega Okada? WWE's got it next year if they want it. If not, they're losing out. You ain't doing right. It's not good business if you don't give it to me, man. Nakamura wins the Royal Rumble. He goes on to fight AJ Styles, who is the WWE Champion at WrestleMania. Nakamura wins the title at WrestleMania in New Orleans. And we have the King of Strong Style legitimately crowned the King of WWE. I had that idea planned for Finn Balor, but that could, uh, that could still happen. We could still see Balor and Joe at WrestleMania as well. But I, I think it would be great if Nakamura wins the Royal Rumble right now. I'm just thinking ahead. I'm thinking too far ahead right now. I'm getting a little bit too excited. But uh, that's your SmackDown Live review. It was a decent show. I was very underwhelmed with the Superstar shakeup. Fuck JBL. Fire JBL. Seriously. There was a nice little crowd, uh, you know, chanting Fire JBL during the commercials that I seen on Twitter. There was a nice sign. Kudos to those people that brought that big sign. Uh, we miss Moro. Seeing it in the crowd tonight. And it was a decent show, man. Uh, I really don't know what show was better this week. Both had their ups and downs. It was pretty much even across the board. Neither show really excited me all that much. I really wasn't expecting much out of the Superstar shakeup. It was very underwhelming. It just came off really rushed and uncreative. And, you know, I'm sitting here like, eh, you know, it really wasn't all that special at all. Being that it was a two-day thing. And now that it's over, I'm looking back, it's like, it is what it is, man. We got some fresh matchups. That's what WWE had in mind, and that's the most that came out of it. So we got NXT to look forward to. We got Bobby Roode now trying to find out a new number one contender for his championship. If you read the spoilers, you know who it is. Um, Drew McIntyre will be making his debut on NXT. I'm not sure if it's this week or next week, but he is signed to NXT. Going to add a nice little element of intrigue there. And, you know, we'll keep on rolling, man. WWE content. Keep it on. You know, it's going to keep coming. And hopefully I can find more news and rumors for you guys later this week. Um, the one big thing that I'm hearing today is that Finn Balor does have a legit concussion from what Jinder Mahal did to him on Monday Night Raw. Don't know how long he's going to be out. He might be out a couple of weeks. But he did suffer a legit injury, and Balor is hurt again. Fuck you, Jinder Mahal. Give him a fucking wellness test and suspend that motherfucker. 
But uh, other than that, man, there's really nothing else going on in a very underwhelming last two days here with the Superstar Shakeup. I'm JD. Thank you guys so much. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe, man. We are only 50 away from 77,000 subs, man. Let's get this channel to 77,000 subs, man. Thank you all so much. Follow me on Twitter, at JD from NY206. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you have not done so already. Barbershopwindow.com slash off the script for your t-shirts. Patreon.com slash JD from NY206 for your pledges monthly if you care to. Not really an obligation, but it's there if you guys want to. And audibletrial.com slash off the script for your free trial of Audible with one free audio book. I am JD. I will see you guys tomorrow night for Out of Nowhere with Joe Cronin. And then Thursday for NXT review leading up into Friday with Off the Script. I'm JD. Have a great night. And I'll see you all tomorrow night for Out of Nowhere.